Ok. ¿Me vas, a, ¿Me vas a presentar? Julio. Well, uh, good afternoon, everybody. We are going to start the seminar of today that we are testing if we can come back to the seminar room. So we are doing this from here now, but not with many people yet. So hopefully in the very soon we can start again with the seminar from here in person, but most probably should be online as well because the space would not be enough for everybody, but uh, we will try to do our best. So today we have a uh, Raul Toral. If you are from IFISC and don't know him, you are not from IFISC, but uh, so he has been with us forever. So he doesn't need any presentation. I was born here. <laughs> he was born here, that's true. So uh, in, uh, in the presentation, uh, he's going to talk about non-Markovian effects with emphasis on the voter model with aging. So okay. thank you very much, Raul. Thank for... you very much. Claudio, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for the invitation. <laughs> um, the truth is that there was no, there was an NPS lot today. So I had to, someone had to fill it and I had given this talk recently. So I volunteer for that. There is still some, what is that? No, I'm the speaker. I think so, right? Um, okay, I'm going to talk about this non-Markovian effects. And I will give an emphasis. I will give a couple of examples. But I will um, give a special emphasis on this voter model with aging, which I will define uh, uh, on the talk. Okay, good. No, why is no, this is not working? No, it died. <laughs> Sorry, this died. Okay. okay. Uh, so first, let me give you first the, the list of collaborators. This was work. I have been doing with some of the people at IFIS here. Luis Fernandez was a, a PhD student that left a few years ago. And then most recent work has been done with Tony and Oriol, also PhD students, with Naji, a postdoc that was here and left two years ago, with Javier and Maxi, and more recently with, we are continuing this work with Tobias and Joel. Okay, but still I will, talk mostly about the work I did with, uh, with Tony, Oriol, Naji, Javier, and, and Luis. Okay, uh, I'm going to talk about this Markovian hypothesis. Okay, what is this Markovian? Markovian means something like lack of memory. We have this idea Markovian means there is no memory. Okay, so try to be able to be more precise at what we mean by non-Markovianity and why it's so important for a person to be Markovian or not to be Markovian. I'll give you an example, all of which, I mean, this example we have seen thousands of times in the last, the last, in the last year, okay? The example of this model of infected as susceptible. <clears throat> so you have a population with two types of individual, infected as susceptible, that are well mixed, and then you want to know how many infected individuals you have. And then you have two processes. One is a contagion process, by which a, an infected people infects a susceptible people, and you have two um, infected, or an infected recovers and you have a susceptible. This is called the SIS model, which you know can be qualified. Now, which is one of the basic assumptions that is done many times, not always, but many times, is that things occur immediately, okay? So you start, you are, for instance, you are in the, in the, in the infected process, and then you recover all of a sudden, okay? At any time, with a constant rate. This is the Markovian hypothesis. Things happen, maybe with some probability, but it doesn't depend on previous history. So the fact that you recover at a constant rate doesn't take into account how long you have been in the infected state. This is wrong, plainly wrong. Now, the thing is how wrong it is. When we make this assumption, how wrong is this assumption? Or which results did you obtain at variance when you do not consider this, this Markovian uh, assumption. Of course, when you have Markovian assumption, is is mostly done because of mm, mathematical simplicity, and you can write the master equation that you all have seen. And if not, uh, you can come to the master and you'll see how it's, how it's obtained. And you have this process in which the number of infected increases by one and decreases by one. 
As I say, this Markovian assumption is wrong most of the time. Okay. Oh. Okay. Obviously, as I say, one of the things that you do not recover at a constant rate. You have a flu, you do not recover the first day of the flu. Nothing. Rate of recovering is zero. Okay, so a constant rate for the recovery is plainly wrong. What can you do? Well, you can change the distribution of recovery times. Instead of assuming, ah, instead of assuming that the recovery rate is constant, which leads to an exponential function for the recovery time, you can assume uh, some more realistic form. For example, people have used the viable distribution, the log normal, the gamma, or even a fixed delay where you have things happening at a time tau exactly after the beginning of the, of the process, okay? Um, as I say, this, this assumption is question. You need the, you need the, the microphone. Can you give the microphone to? Yeah, we'd like to, to distinguish between stationarity of the rates and, and, uh, and Markovian uh, dynamics. I mean, here you are assuming that the rates are not constant with time. I'm assuming they're constant with time, yes. If, so, if the rates depend on the time you have been in the infected state, then this is not, this is not Markovian. Okay. okay. Um, of course, there are many examples that I say what I say is, I mean, this is what well known, okay? I'm not discovering anything. Uh, this is well known. And for instance, you have a series of these proteins which are produced in the cell. This look, this have, this have, when the proteins are produced, sorry, I cannot, I cannot use the, the pointer because I may produce for the audience. Uh, you see, this is the, when the proteins are produced and you can see this is not consistent with a constant rate. Most of the times proteins are produced in bursts. Okay. And you have how many bursts you have, how many proteins per burst and you have different distributions. Okay. Uh, again, in social interactions, we do not interact at a constant rate every time, every, every day. First, so that, that, these are data coming from a social network. Um, these are data coming from Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. The fact that when you post something, you are not constantly posting at a constant rate. Okay? I mean, there are bursts of activity which have some periodicity. Um, this hope will happen for data on Twitter. This is the data that have been collected here on Twitter. Also for avalanches in, in materials, it is not correct to assume that you have a constant rate. Henceforth, you have an exponential distribution of the time between events. Okay, this is totally wrong. Now, I will give you, as I said, uh, I was going to give you three examples, but I, I realized it was too much material. I will give just two examples, okay? First, I will give you a short summary of what is a birth and death process. So it's just to fix notation, this is what we're talking about. I will talk about the delay in degradation. I will not talk about this delay in degradation. That will require much time than I have. Then we'll talk about the water model, and some non-linear and aging versions of the water model. This is, as I say, this is work that has been done. That was part of the thesis of Oriol and Tony, uh, but I don't think has been never exposed in us, besides the, the, the thesis has never been exposed in a, in a seminar. Okay. Uh, first, uh, the basic birth and process. So something is born and dies. Okay, you can give many interpretations. Okay, a protein that is born out of a, a, of a cell and then it dies. A person that is born, and whatever, whatever you want to give it. And then we fix on the number of particles of X that we have called little X. We have a degradation rate. If each one of the persons of the particles or whatever you call it, die in, independently with a rate gamma, the total rate of decay is simply proportional to gamma. Okay, gamma times the number of, of people alive. You have the creation rate, which typically depends on a system volume and can depend on other things. If this creation rate depends on the number of particles, we talk about feedback. The feedback can be positive or negative. The more particles there are, the higher the rate of creation. And it can be negative. The more particles there are, the, the smaller the rate of, of, of creation. This is a stochastic system. We look for the probability of having n particles at time t. And we look in a situation which n is not a large number, so fluctuation effects are important. You cannot treat that, that in mean field, but we want to look at some stochastic effects. Okay, what happens with the fluctuations of this process? 
Uh, of course, you can write down a master equation, and then, you know, this is quite the standard, and you can solve it. And for instance, if you consider a constant creation rate and a constant creation rate gamma, you see that the steady state is a Poisson distribution. Okay? This is a feature of a birth and rate with constant creation and degradation rate and independent processes. This is a Poisson distribution. Uh, the mean value, the Poisson distribution is characterized by the mean value equals to the, to the variance. Okay? This is a signature, it's, I mean, it's not um, if and only if, but when you see distribution in which the mean value is equal to the, to the fluctuation, mm, Poisson, okay? Although I, it's not mathematically um, rigorous. And then you look at the correlation function, it decays exponentially. So these two signatures are characteristic of the birth and death process with no interaction and with no feedback, okay? An exponential decay of the, Poisson of the correlations and a Poisson distribution. The problem is that when you have these features and you assume that you have independent particles, okay? You cannot go the other way. And that's what I want to show. There will be occasion we have, we might have fluctuations equal to the mean value, but not a process of independence. Okay. Uh, for instance, um, if the in the negative feedback, that's that's a typical example of negative feedback. The more particles you have, the less the creation rate. This leads to a sub Poissonian distribution. With the fluctuations are less than mean value. If a positive feedback, this is a function that grows with n, that goes to a super Poissonian. The fluctuations are larger than the mean value. Okay, so remember this result. Poisson means that there are um, no feedback, negative feedback, sub Poissonian, fluctuations are smaller than the mean value. And positive feedback, non Poissonian, super Poissonian, with fluctuations larger than the mean value. Now, let me talk about this delay in the creation. As I say, I mean, there are many examples. I like, I like this one of a proteins producing within a cell. So, the, how proteins are produced? Proteins are produced by a transcription of the DNA. So, you need to copy a fraction of DNA into the messenger RNA. The messenger RNA goes to the ribosome, creates a protein, and then this protein decays and dies. So we have a process, this is the standard dogma of molecular biology. So we have from the gene, you get this messenger RNA. For the messenger RNA, you get the protein, and the protein acts and decays. You have this process. All these processes are not instantaneous. They are initiated randomly. But on top of that, they are not instantaneous. Okay, the, the, the gene from the RNA, from the RNA from the protein takes some time. It's not an instantaneous process. And then you can simplify this. Uh, which is simplification say from the gene you get the protein the protein acts and decays so let we'll me simplify that by this out of nothing you get the protein and the protein decays and here you have some creation and degradation rate which are complex there will be many feedbacks and there will be delays so once the process has been initiated it takes some time to complete okay uh, in here we, when you look at proteins of course the it's a small numbers of proteins so fluctuations are important. The delays are important. Um, more or less, the how these delays are distributed are also important. Yeah. I have a question because you mixed uh, at some point. You talk about non state or non constant rate, and now you are talking about delay, which which are independent or are different effects, aren't they? It's a different rate. The, the, the constant rate initiates the process, but once the process has been initiated, it takes some time to complete, and this time to complete is a random variable. Also. Okay, so this is what I showed you before, and you can see here the distribution of, of, of number of bursts that you create, and the distribution of molecules per burst is not is not a Poisson distribution. Now, how do you do this? Well, um, you need to write the master equation. In this, but I will not give you any details of the, of the, of the mathematics, so don't worry. Uh, but in this case, it's not too difficult to understand. Simply, you have to include in your Master equation in the in the in the, um, in the creation in the creation process all the processes that were created at time tau before so this tau goes from zero to infinity so everything that happened in the past with some probability okay but this is here you cannot trust intuition much in this field okay so sometimes it gives you wrong result but not in this particular case so you can actually understand this and then you need to solve this and to check this this is a non-Markovian because you have the two times 
Cauchy distribution. So the one time is coupled to the two time distribution. Uh, you can simplify that when there is no delay. So f of tau is simply a delta. Everything happens time equals zero. You get the standard master equation. But you can solve this. Okay, I will not show you. I will not tell you how it solves. But let me give you just the result. Imagine we have a, a negative feedback. Okay, this is called this Hill function. We had the, the creation rate decays with the number of particles. So the more particles they are, the more the rate. And then what we find? We find that as a function of the time delay, tau, we find that the mean value is basically constant. It's small dependence on the mean of the time, but very small, very small dependence. But when you look at the fluctuations, when tau is zero, the fluctuations are below the mean value. Okay, so those mean the fluctuations, the fluctuations are below the mean value. This is for tau equals to zero because I'm not delay. As delay increases, fluctuations increase. And then you can reach, although until they reach a, a, a constant value, what you can see is that you can have a regime of sub Poissonian fluctuations to a regime of super Poissonian fluctuations. Okay? And this has been induced by the delay. So this fact that you can go from sub Poissonian to super Poissonian might not have to do with the dependence on the particles. It has to do, or might have to do with the uh, time delay in this process. So the system can change from sub Poissonian to super Poissonian. So this is a summary of results. You have a negative feedback. And you increase the correlation time, you go from super Poissonian, from sub Poissonian, so fluctuations below the mean, to fluctuations above the mean. If your feedback is positive, an increase of the delays decreases the fluctuations. Okay? So this has an, a contrary effect. If you go this, fluctuations decrease. If you go this way, fluctuations increase. So this is a, I mean, a non trivial effect of the fluctuation that can take you. A system which, if you are exactly at this point or near this point, you might believe that you have a Poissonian system because your fluctuations are equal to the mean value. That's what most experimentalists look at. They compute the mean value and the fluctuation. They are equal, Poisson. Well, you might be here and the fluctuations are equal to the mean value, but the system is not, doesn't have a Poissonian distribution and the system has some feedback. Um, Depend? Tau not? Well, depends on all the parameters of the model of this uh, uh, C0, Epsilon, and also the, uh, the parameters. Yeah. Different functions? Yeah, yes. Yeah, yes, yes. This is just an example for this particular. This is an example for this particular. And also, well, it's nice to look at the correlation function. The correlation function has a funny shape. I always write it, I plot it because you know it looks so weird. But it's true, okay? This is the theory. The theory, and these are the simulations. So it does look like this. And this always uh, when you have a, a um, this monotonic character, this is a signature of of, of oscillations, of stochastic oscillations, which appear typically in delay systems. Delay systems also show uh, oscillations. Okay, so I like to plot this figure because of the no, how weird it is it shows oscillation so it goes from positive to negative and oscillates uh, it's not exponential decay of course I, 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 we thought it was wrong but it agrees well with the simulation so now let me go to the second example okay i was i will not give you something about the delay in the degradation i will talk about this aging in the bottom part. here is a similar model as as the one that we've been discussing now in the sense that we have two types of per, of people but now we think that these people hold a different opinion. Okay, now the interpretation, of course, this is varied, but if we talk about different opinions. So we can have an opinion red or an opinion white on a topic. And then you can, by interacting, you can get that one of the people copies the opinion of the other. Can copy the, the, the red, can copy the white, the white can copy the red, or you can go between the two states, between the state. A white and red with some things. All of these are stochastic. We call H the herding, simply the copying, and we call A the noise. Remember, there is herding and noise. There is not much you need to remember all of this. But we will include a phenomenon by which the rate of transition, more specifically, the rate of copying, depends on H. 
it depends on how long you have been in your current state. This is like some inertia. The longer you are holding an opinion, the more difficult it is for you to change. Yeah? Replace opinion by some other thing. The, the longer you have been using one operating system, the more difficult it is for you to change. The longer you have been using, uh, you have been voting a, a party, the more difficult it is for you to change. This inertia, this reluctance to change introduced by age, the longer you have been in the state, the more difficult it is for you to change. This model, is, this ingredient is so simple that has been appeared in many, 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 many fields, okay? Uh, here are some examples. All, all this literature is, all these papers are unaware of the others, okay? They have appeared in different fields and they don't cite the, the other contributions, okay? But we, we do, this is a recent work. We put that into context as a, has been used properly. But you know, these earlier papers, paper by Moran, paper the, of the, the noisy that actually gave name to the, to the model, it's a mathematics probability paper. This is a strongly correlated system percolation. And this paper, which I will discuss in a moment, this reaction, surface reaction, they all were unaware of the, of the work of us. So I, li I like to explain this using the, the work of, I'm sorry, this does not disappear. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how to, how to remove this. Okay. Uh, as I say, Kirman, who is an economist, did the following comparison. And this is Kirman's, okay, not mine. I will not dare to do that. He considers two, two persons who have uh, more specific brokers in a stock market and can be in two states. And the two states are optimistic or pessimistic. Opti optimistic people buy, pessimistic people sell. Okay, and then he, Alan Kirman, compares their behavior of the brokers to that of ants that can follow two different paths to get the food at the end. Okay, here are the, the ants and they need to go here to get the food. They can follow this path or follow this path. He did experiments with ants and he observed switching of the path that the ants follow. And then he made this comparison. And they say, brokers act by the following rules. They can be in two states, state zero or state one, state plus or state minus, and they can go from state zero to state, to state one with some rate. It has two paths. One is a random change, just because, okay? Today, I feel like I'm going to buy for no particular reason. Of course, there could be external reasons. There could be external information, so, but everything is included in a constant rate. I'm going to change independently of what others do. But this is, I'm going to look at my neighbors. I'm going to see how many of them are in the, in the selling state and I'm going to switch to the selling state with a probability, with a rate proportional to the fraction of neighbors in the other state. So the change of a state means to copy another broker chosen randomly, completely equivalent. Okay, this is the imitation process called the herding. Simply you copy, you see that everybody is selling, okay, I will sell. Everybody is buying, and I was selling, I will buy. Okay. Okay, you have these two rates. A rate which has a constant term, which is called the noise, and, and something which is the, the herding. And then you, you look, Kirman goes on that. He makes a model of the market. From this model of the market, he gets the returns. He gets that the returns do not follow Gaussian distribution, which is called um, the non, it has a name, which I forgot. This non Gaussian effects in the market. So he, he does get a model of the market, okay? We will not do that. Uh, but let me uh, describe this model. How, how, does it behave? how does it behave? So what is the question we want to answer here? The question we want to answer is the following. We have these two mechanisms, random changes and copy. At the end of the day, when we reach a steady state, will everybody be in the same state? Or there will be roughly 50% of people in each one of the two states. So will reach a situation of order or disorder, of consensus or dissensus. Consensus that everybody is doing the same action, that's called order, we call that order. And then, of course, since there are two competing effects, you can think that the herding tends to order, tends to, everybody wants to do the same, but the noise tends to disorder, a diffusion. So that 
whether you reach a situation of order or disorder depends on the noise, uh, on, on the relative value of the noise and the herding. If the noise is less than the herding divided by the number of particles, then you have order. Of course, this is order in a finite system. What you have is that mostly it is in one of the, uh, this is consensus in one of the states and it fluctuates, consensus in the other state, fluctuates, consensus in the other state. But and a significant amount of time, everybody is doing the same thing. Whereas when you have a noise larger than h over n, what you have is roughly 50% of the people in each of the state. Okay? So you look at the protein distribution for a less than h over n, you have this double p distribution, you have maxima at the two extremes. For a greater than h over n, the maximum is at n over 2, 50%, and at the critical value, you have this plus distribution. But of course, you've noticed that this depends on n. As the statistical physicists, we like to tend to take the limit n large. So when Kirman does have a problem, Kirman is dealing with a thousand brokers or hundreds of brokers, or brokers. Okay, but here, when to analyze this model from the point of view of this mechanics, we take the limit of large n. In the limit of large n, the model always lacks consensus because the critical value is always zero. A is always greater than h over n because n is infinite. So we're always in this situation. So you can think, okay, this is an analysis done on the on the all to all lattice. I mean, uh, for these uh, agents, will not interact everybody with everybody. It will be some network interaction. Can we fix that by including a network? That's not. In most of the networks, which is Barabasi Albert, the you, the, you have that the critical value depends on an effective value. Okay, this effective value. And this effective value depends, it also grows with n for most of the, for most of the, but this is for the Barabasi Alberta, for the Erdo Reni, you get similar, similar results. Okay. Um, so from now on, we consider simply the, the, fully, the fully connected lattice, which is the results are representative. And I, I like to point, this is, um, um, as a subtle point is that this idea that in the limit when n goes to infinity, the system is always disordered, also holds in the noiseless case. It's a question of how, how you take the limits. Okay, you take the limit first, n going to infinity, and then a equals to zero is always a disordered state. In the case of noiseless case, what you have is that the, in the limit of large n, you live in a metastable state that remains for a long time before it reaches consensus. So the time in which you are living in the stable state grows with system size. As the system size increases, these metastable states live longer and longer. So you're always in the disorder state. So bottom line, this model is always disordered in the limit of large A. So that may be one of the most boring models in the world, in the world because it's always disordered. So we, you know, um, and this is not what is observed. I mean, what is observed in the, in, the, in, the, in the markets and so on is that you have this, these activities in which people collectively do the same thing, okay? Even for a large number of people. So what we're going to do is to try to modify this model in such a way that we get a genuine transition from order to disorder. And there have been many attempts to do that, okay? One of the first attempts was done by Alfarano, which he, um, collaborators, they constructed a, a specific type of network, a network with some particular structure, not a not a random, not a, a complex network, but with some structure. Okay, in which uh, there was uh, some uh, 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 groups of groups of groups of groups, and in that sense, here they could they could get a um, finite transition at a finite number of, um, of a, in the infinite in the infinite thermodynamic radius. Here we talk about these two effects. No linearity of the rate aging. Both of them are quite natural. Okay? They are natural ingredients to include in the model. And we'll see that both of them have similar effects and they modify the result of that. The first is this nonlinear rate. You kind of see the reference there, but it's summarized in this paper. In this, in this nonlinear rate, what you have is that, remember, this is the rate as a function of the, of the fraction, as a function of the fraction of agents in the different state, which is linear, okay, it's a linear. Now we modify that by including a non-linearity term. So simply your rate of copying depends on a power alpha 
of the fraction of neighbors holding a different opinion. No longer linear. Why this? Well, there are different interpretations, all of them quite natural. One of them is that if alpha is less than one, we have an aversion to change. We don't like to change. So we need more than just looking at the fraction. We need to reinforce our rule by increasing the value of agents in the other state. Because the you know, this rate, when alpha is positive, is great, is smaller. This rate is smaller than the cost of other, In some other cases, you might have some preference to change. You have preference to change, which is not very normal, although there are cases in which you have this happens. What you have is that you like to change more than in the random case. If you choose alpha to be an integer number, two, three, four, this is called the Q-voter model. And you can interpret this rule. This is an interpretation of this rule in which what you need to do is to look, for example, let's say the Q equals to three. If you go to three, you need to look at your neighbors and you need to find three of them which are in a different state. You look at one, how are you selling? Mm, not enough. You are selling, not enough. You are selling, oh, three people are selling. I will change. You need some reinforcement. Okay, you, don't, you just don't copy the first one. Look at some of your neighbors. If two of them are this that you have chosen and in a different state, then you copy. Okay, then we had an interesting discussion yesterday whether this, this is a group effect or not and let's keep let's keep it this way okay it's a q voter model a non-linear effect of q voter model um there have been applications of this model which um, in which the two states are the language that people speak okay and they have been even attempts to fit the, the dynamics of the model to some cases of galician and gaelic and it has been always found that this alpha is greater than one so people are reluctant to change the language they speak um, now, which is the main result of this? Well, again, I will not give you any, any of the details, how we, do, how we do it. Just remember the rate to go from the state plus to minus depends on the number of the fraction of agents in the state minus to the power alpha, and similarly for the rate to minus to, to, to plus. And here, when we do that, you analyze, you see that there is a transition point, a critical, which depends on alpha. Alpha is the non-linearity parameter. And you can see that now in the limit when n goes to infinity, there is a finite value for this transition point. So there is a well-defined transition between order and disorder, between collective behavior and disorganized behavior. Last, you can plot the phase diagram. The phase diagram is for critical value, this alpha. Alpha equals to one with this borderline. We see when alpha equals to one, the critical value goes as two over n, as I showed you before, uh, one over n. I've showed you before, but you have this. These are uh, different lines are different approximations. It's for all to all for lattices. I said the results in the all to all lattice are representative. And you can find this thing. You have a unimodal. So this is the disorder phase. Okay, your distribution is peak around in order two. This is by model, and you have a true phase transition between um, a disorder and an ordered state. With a, with a symmetry breaking, you can be everybody in the zero state, everybody, a large fraction of people in the zero state, a large fraction in the one state. A true phase transition with symmetry breaking. You have a, you also first order transitions at a critical point. This is a very rich model. So the message is that by including this, this nonlinearity, you modify essentially the conclusion of the model. Okay, A model which did not have a phase transition, now it does. This is a relevant parameter. It has uh, it has a um, three three distribution, distribution has three peaks, two uh, two uh, the two extremes and one in the middle which is metastable. Okay, so this is again a summary of the same result. Nonlinearity alpha greater than one induces a well-defined transition. So these are the um, the other parameter, which is you know, the magnetization, two times the fraction of h in one state minus one. Uh, and the absolute value of this. And you see, for alpha equals to one, we had consensus in a region whose width was one over n. As n goes to zero, this goes to zero. For alpha positive, two, five, and six, which is greater than this critical value, you have a, a well defined first order trans uh, second order transition. And here you have a, a first order transition for alpha greater than five. 
Okay, so this this modifies substantially the the model. So the message is that making it more difficult to change makes it easier to reach consensus. You know, maybe. <laughs> okay, but this is the conclusion of the model. Okay, I don't know whether it's reasonable. Yeah, of course. Now you can justify it, but maybe you can say beforehand you would have said that oh, the more difficult it is to change, the more difficult it is to get consensus. No, the more difficult it is to change, the easier it is to get consensus. In one of these. <clears throat> now we could use the second mechanism, which is related to aging and non-Markovian effects. I guess so. Yes, it's quite similar to this model. It's the same universality class, so you can have domains. Now, this is the, the, um, this is the normal Markovian effect here. I went here. As far as I know, this was written by this work by Stark the Sony, a watch, study, watch a student here at the FISC, and Frank Schweitzer. And they introduced this idea we call inertia. Right? They call it inertia. We call it aging. They call that inertia. But it's the same idea. The idea is that the longer you have been in one state, the more difficult it is for you to interact. So the probability of interaction, P of tau, depends on how long you have been in a particular state. But remember, in the bottom model, you, with some rate, you select one of your neighbors and you copy that neighbor. Here, you do that only with some probability. This probability that decreases with the longer you have been in the same state. When you change the state, your time resets to zero. Okay? The longer you're in the state, time increases, and then it is more difficult for you to change, more difficult for you to interact, with to try the change. Um, the idea is this probability decreases with time. This probability to interact decreases with tau. Tau is the time that you have been in your current state. This is a non Markovian effect. Okay? Your probability of interaction doesn't depend on your current state, it depends on your history. Uh, in what they found in this, this paper is that uh, aging or inertia, they call it, favors consensus in the noiseless bottom model. The noiseless, remember, there is only copying. So when you have only copying, that's what they found. Uh, we have here a summary. We, we, we completed these results in this, in this paper, and this is a summary of our, of our results. Okay. Um, but remember what happens here. If P tau is a constant, the probability of, interac of interaction is constant. No, you do not read consensus. We're talking about the linear model. If we're in the linear model, if P is a constant, you do not read consensus. Yeah? We are in this situation. We are here. Okay? If P is a constant, a constant probability of interaction, you are here. But there is no consensus. If P decreases, it's like an enemy limit. It's also, when you have in the, in the for a finite number of, of systems, this is not a true phase transition. You switch from one state to another. Okay. Whereas when you have true phase transition, you have a symmetry breaking. You remain in one state forever. You choose the zero or the one, and you stay there forever. That's, that's how maybe here. Where they found and we, we extend to in this paper, is that if this property decreases to a finite value, you reach consensus. But look, I, I, it's quite counterintuitive. So if P tau is equals to one, always one, you don't reach consensus. If P tau is equals to always 0.4, or always 0.4, you do not reach consensus. This always this simply rescales the time. But when you decrease from this value to this value, you reach consensus. How do you reach consensus? Well, it depends on how you go there. Uh, to measure how you reach consensus, you, you measure the average fraction of zero one links, okay, which is zero in the consensus state. In here, you reach consensus as an exponential. Okay, that, that was the result of the start out. You reach consensus exponential. So this is a well defined time to reach consensus. Okay. Look, if this P tau increases, you do not reach consensus. Okay. So, so if P tau is a constant, you do not reach consensus. If P tau increases to a constant, you don't reach consensus. But you decrease from one constant to another, you do reach consensus. 
Okay, this is the model. Okay. Raúl. Yep. Uh, this is in a complete graph, right? This is a complete graph. Yeah, yeah. But, um, I think it's true in other graphs. I think I think it doesn't depend on. I don't think it's true in other graphs. This is representative in the complete graph. You do, you know it's not true in other graphs. Um, well, the decay of the uh, of the average of the interface density could be different. Okay. And not exponential maybe. in the app. Okay, the app. but but the main result is true. But it's still a decays. Now, <clears throat> now if if this probability decreases towards zero, here when the probability decreases to a finite value, when you decrease towards zero, there are three possibilities or two uh, two possibilities with a border with a border. If it decreases up faster than one over tau, you do not reach consensus. If you decrease as lower than one over tau, you reach consensus exponentially. But if you decrease exactly as one over tau, you reach consensus as a power law. Okay? And this was the result that was obtained by Maxi and Victor and Juan. And we were very glad to be able to prove that. I mean, that was mostly numerical results. We were able to prove that analytically, that if the probability of interaction decays as one over tau, the exponent of the power b is the prefactor that appears there. Okay, we were able to put it there. Um, okay, that, that was for the noiseless bottom model. Okay, this is for the bottom model without noise. Okay, that was the result of uh, Tessone and Stark and Weiser. And we, we, now we consider the full model. The full model we have noise and we have also dispositive interaction. We, we recently we have a, um, a student who did also the case in which the probability interaction can affect both the noise and the copy mechanism. So here we only did that the probability interaction affects the copy mechanism. So we introduce this probability tau, which we take as one over tau, decreasing as one over tau, this is a particular form, and we include that in the model. Okay. Then what do we find? We find that the inclusion of this factor induces a bona fide, a well-defined phase transition between order and disorder. So again, when you introduce this term, which makes it more difficult to interact, you find a transition from order to disorder. So it is easier to get consensus when the relative interaction decreases. These are the these are the results. This is what happened when we have no aging. Okay, this p is equals to one or constant. What we have is that for a critical value, we have this. Uh, by model distribution of unimodal, but the critical value was of order one over n. So the, the width of the, um, of the consensus is of order one over n. When we include aging, still remember linear rates, okay? This is the one to emphasize that, maybe it was clear. The rates are linear. So you select one of your neighbors to copy randomly, but you copy the neighbor with some probability. With, you don't copy it blindly, you copy it with some probability, it depends on the age. You have been interested. So when you do that, you find that the model displays a clear, um, noise, uh, clear phase transition. You have this unimodal or bimodal distribution, but you see quite different from there. Okay, you have two peaks which are very narrow and which is split in the limit of an infinite size. These peaks are delta functions. So you go to one or the other. You can plot the phase diagram. This phase diagram is magnetization as a function of the noise, and again you find this well-defined position line that has a critical point, a finite value critical point. And these are the source of the theory in, the, in a complete graph with the numericals. And you have the scaling functions and so on. This belongs to the Ising University class as probably expected. <clears throat> now, okay. now we have these two, two effects. We have seen two things that when you make it more difficult, to, I've said that so many times because it's the message. <laughs> when it is more difficult to change, it is easier to get consent. And we find in two different effects, by a non-linear term in the rates, or by aging, okay? Now, can these two be related? Is there a similarity, a bit mathematical similarity between the two, the two concepts? And in, in this, it is. Now, of course, there will be another talk. What do you mean by models Markovian, non-Markovian? 
as you probably know, a non-Markovian model can be made Markovian when you increase the number of variables. In this particular case, you, it is true. If you include not just how many agents are in the plus state, but you say how many agents are in the plus state or in the minus, with the time tau, and tau can give any can take any value zero to one. So you include infinite variables to make the system Markovian. Okay, you can make the system Markovian. So the, the change only depends on the state at a current time. But you, for that, you need to increase the, the the dimensionality of the space to an infinite number of variables. Instead of one variable, which is the number of edges in the, in the plus state, you need to consider this infinite number of variables. Okay, if you do that, you can have a sort of Markovian description. You can write you can write rate equations. You can write mean field equations and so on. You can do a lot of mathematics, which are not that simple, but you can do that. And then <clears throat> what we do is uh, we want to reduce that to Markovian process. Okay, so we have is the devolution of the number of agents which are in the plus state and have an internal time tau, the evolution of the number of agents, the time in the state minus, we have a time tau. And this is coupled to the total number of agents in the plus state. Okay, you have an infinite set of equations. Okay, this is, remember, we can reduce out to a Markovian, but the price to pay is that we need to deal with an infinite set of, of evolution equations. So we go to an infinite set of evolution equations, and then we try to simplify them. And we simplify them by using this adiabatic elimination. So we assume that the time evolution of the global variable x is much slower than the time evolution of the individual variables n tau plus n tau minus. So we said this equals to zero. We said this derivative equals to zero. By setting this, this is a very simple theoretical elimination. By setting this derivative equals to zero, we find the number of variables uh, with time tau in the plus state or the minus state as a function of the global variable x. Okay? Since the global variable x is nothing but the sum of this, of this, the sum of n tau plus and n tau minus for tau between zero and infinity, you can get a close equation for the evolution of the total number of particles, which is this one. Okay, there's a close equation for the evolution of the total number of particles. And you can write this in this form. Okay, this evolution equation. You can write this in this form. You can perform these sums and you reach this form. So you have reduced this non Markovian problem to a Markovian problem, to a Markovian process. Which price have you paid? You have paid the price that your rates are some complicated um, expressions. And of course, the rates will not be linear. They have some complicated expression, they are not linear anymore. So we have reduced that to a one step process. The number of um, agents in the one state can increase or decrease by one with some effective rates. And those effective rates well, we'll do this question later. Once you have this, once you have this, you can compute, for instance, you can write this a typical Markovian process. You can write the stationary distribution. You can find a potential and, and identify the stable phases with the potential. So you can do all the machinery that you, you are, know how to do. You can compute the mean value. You can compute the fluctuations. For instance, this is the this is the fluctuation. This is the fourth cumulant, and you can derive a scalar laws and so on using this effective range. Okay. Using this as a starting point, using this station resolution, you can find all these results analytically and analytic in the complete graph. Okay. This is when you can do all the, all the mathematics. Now we'll walk into that another another graphs. Now, as I told you, how do how do these rates look like? Well, complicated expressions, I will not write them down. I will plot them. Okay. So these effective rates look like this. Depend, remember the DSP of tau depends on this parameter B. So these effective rates depend on X, of course, depends on the noise and the herding on this parameter B. And you can have these things. Okay, these are the, the, the effective rates. How do they look like? What do we see? That this is similar to the rates of a Markovian nonlinear process. The things that we have been able to reduce a non Markovian process. To an effective Markovian process, but going from linear rates to nonlinear rates. Therefore, linear rates with alpha 
greater than, than one. Okay, we look at the similarity of this. Okay, this and the similarity with this. Okay, so you have an effective model, an effective nonlinear with a power alpha greater than one. Okay. That's why the two models share the same phenomenology. And you can find the fast transition and the noise intensity as well. Okay, so this is it. Um, the conclusions page has disappeared. <laughs> But I mean, that this is this. Thank you. Oh, so glad to hear the clapping live. Thank you, Raúl. Uh, people in the audience, we we give you preference. Do you have any question? If not, uh, people that are online, they can just uh, put the micro on and, and ask question whenever you want. There's a question there. Uh, okay, yes, uh, yes, a very easy question. Can you repeat the justification for the adiabatic approximation? The justification is assumed that usually that the, a local variable works much faster than the global variable. Ah, okay, okay that's it. And you okay. have this, and these are the local variables, the same that, okay? Um, and this is the global one, which is defined the sum of all, of all others. Okay, thank you. Yes, you, you mentioned that uh, this model has been applied or some version of the model has been applied for economics, for yes. the market. So at the end, the, the predictions that the model did match what, what they do is, somehow. What, what, they get, what they do is the a model in which you have actions, people, uh, stocks, people buy stocks and sell stocks. Yeah. And then you have what we call the return, which is the difference of the price and then so on. And then they look at the distribution of those returns. And they are not Gaussian. Okay. It's called, the, it's called stylized facts. Okay. Stylized facts means that this distribution is not Gaussian. So yeah. Kirman was able to show, to show that, that by doing this. But you, you need a model get... of the market behind that. Okay. This okay. is just one ingredient. Then you have to put that into a model of the market. Uh -huh. And then he got with all this together, he got effectively. This. And distribution of return, which is not Gaussian, as it is observed. As, as in the market. Okay. In the market, I'm not experimenting. Okay. Maxi, you wanted to ask anything? Uh, not, not, not really. Um, <laughs> I, I think I know most of, of what yeah, I'm, you know most of it. And I do not disagree. So. I have a short question because in the, in the first part, you showed that there were oscillations due to the delay in the interaction there. Did you observe also chaotic behavior or not? Did you observe? Oscillations oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah, are due to the induced by the delay in the equation. Could you also observe uh, chaos in, in that case, or you didn't observe it? Uh, I don't know. Observe chaos. The principal delay can induce chaos. So that's why I uh, asked. If you are in the in the weak yeah. regime, you can have oscillations, or the delay is short enough, you can have oscillations compared to the internal time scale of the system that you have. But if it is longer, but you expect we, to have a chaotic. But we look mostly in the cases in which the noise does not, that the delay does not give any of those results in the deterministic limit. Okay, these are results due to the stochastic nature of the, but you're right, I mean, the delay. But that will be also, that will be also shown by the deterministic version. You do not need the stochastic effects. If there are no other questions, we think again. I might ask a question. Uh, uh, Raul, this idea that this linear <coughs> non Markovian becomes a non linear Markovian, would that be stated in, in general terms or? I, I, I will love to. <laughs> so I encourage people to look for other models <laughs> in which they can find the same result. I, I would I would think it's a general result. Yes. I would think. I, I, I also I mean, think some so. some some basic ingredients, right? Basic symmetry, and you know, I, I, I would think it belongs to the Ising universality class in there. So why not? I have also a question. Uh, so the, the result that the that the nonlinear rates are related to the aging is is for the for a specific probability distribution of the of the delays. We do that the, as an example. We have done we have done many, but these results are for this particular one. Okay. 
and, and, and you have an analytical expression that links the the exponent alpha yeah. with the with this probability very ugly yeah, very, very ugly, ugly expression. <laughs> no i mean it cannot be really fit to that okay it cannot be really fit to this particular form i'm mentioning it is similar okay it is similar in the sense that you know for like this the second derivative which is positive but it cannot be fit i mean it can be fit but it's not an exact expression given by this nonlinear term okay? you can fit an alpha from there you want to of course, you can fit an alpha, but it's not an exact expression. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Who did that? No, I don't know. Now, can you do something to have the same solution? I don't know. I don't know. Raul, you can do something. Beyond the change of distribution is allowed and exposed. I don't know. Again, we cannot read the question. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I, I need to. I need to stop share, right? I know. Where is the chat? Ah, get the chat. You can do, is that a question? That, that is, allow and expose. You can do something else. We don't change the two, that's allow and expose compartment. Well, the model can be, yeah, the, the model can be complicated in many ways. I have different compartments and different categories. Yeah, but we have not done that. I don't see a question anyway, no, whether it's a statement or a question. <laughs> Well, okay, thanks Raul again, and uh, hope to see you soon uh, in this room for the next uh, okay. seminars. Okay.